Good morning and welcome to Morning Prayers this Thursday. It's uh, good to be able to join you and for us to join together in praying for things around the world and things in our community and for anybody who we're particularly concerned about. Um, it's just me this morning. Um, uh, Pixie is on uh, grandparent duty, so um, uh, I, I'm leading. Um, one of the things that we were going to encourage you to think about, because I uh, just wanted to step up a little bit on um, on uh, what we're doing with our prayers, is for you, if you can, over the next uh, couple of days, get yourself a, a little notebook and pen. Uh, this is mine that I... I use for journaling and writing things down and I sometimes use it for for what what I do with my prayers too and uh, we will uh, just encourage you with a few practices in using a journal uh, in our prayers over the next few weeks so if you've got a booklet or a notebook and a pen um, you can join with us or you can um, have a think about it um, and then decide what you want to do. Um, but that's just to help us focus a bit more on our prayers and also um, uh, any names or any uh, particular situations we can write down as, as prayer requests. So uh, let's be still as we come to pray now. And uh, remember that God is always present to us. Uh, it's now our turn to tune in and be present to him. So let's be still for a moment. Just some words from the Natiara prayer book. Give us today our daily bread. Ho mai kia mato aene, hetaro ma mato mo tenera. None of us lives and none of us dies for ourselves alone. Living or dying, we belong to the Lord. Jesus, you are the bread of life. Those who come to you will never be hungry. Those who believe in you will never thirst. You are the living bread from heaven. The bread you give us is your own flesh and you give it for the life of the world. All who eat your flesh and drink your blood live in you and you in them, for your flesh is the food we need. Your blood is our salvation and all who eat your flesh and drink your blood have eternal life. Look to Jesus in the wilderness breaking bread and feeding the multitude. Let's just pause for a moment and think about anything that we are particularly thankful for, for the last couple of days. And then where you are, in your room, wherever, just speak out those things and say, thank you, God, for those. I'll give a moment of quiet so you can do that in your own space. I thank you, God, for the opportunity to be with our grandchildren. Thank you for the sunshine that brightens up our day. Thank you for friends. So Lord, we offer these thanks to you um, remembering that you are the giver of all good gifts and we trust you for this day. Amen. I'm going to read a passage from scripture which uh, today is going to be from Luke chapter 6 and beginning at verse 1. It's a discussion about the Sabbath. <clears throat> one Sabbath day as Jesus was walking through some grain fields his disciples broke off heads of grain rubbed off the husks in their hands and ate the grain. But some Pharisees said, Why are you breaking the law by harvesting grain on the Sabbath? Jesus replied, Haven't you read in the scriptures what David did when he and his companions were hungry? He went into the house of God and broke the law by eating the sacred loaves of bread that only the priests can eat. He also gave some to his companions. And Jesus added, the Son of Man is Lord, even over the Sabbath. On another Sabbath day, a man with a deformed right hand was in the synagogue while Jesus was teaching. 
The teachers of religious law and the Pharisees watched Jesus closely. If he healed the man's hand, they planned to accuse him of working on the Sabbath. But Jesus knew their thoughts. He said to the man with the deformed hand, come and stand in front of everyone. So the man came forward. Then Jesus said to his critics, I have a question for you. Does the law permit good deeds on the Sabbath or is it a day for doing evil? Is this a day to save life or to destroy it? He looked around at them one by one and then said to the man, hold out your hand. So the man held out his hand and it was restored. At this, the enemies of Jesus were wild with rage and began to discuss what to do with him. There is a reflection that goes with this from Walter Brueggemann's Gift and Task, and I thought I'd read it out to us this morning. The Sabbath among the Sinai commandments was simply work stoppage. It was work stoppage that honoured the rhythm of work and rest ordained in creation that contrasted with the endless production quotas of Pharaoh. Over time, however, Sabbath had been drawn into punctilious performance of religious duty. Questions about Sabbath are triggered in our gospel narrative by the conduct of Jesus' disciples. Jesus preempts the questions by his assertion that Sabbath belongs to the Son of Man, that is, to the future that Jesus is creating. He wrests Sabbath away from the calculations of the religious bean counters. He recovers Sabbath for his purpose, which is the restoration of creaturely flourishing. He does so by his terse action in restoring the withered hand of the man. He shows the true intent of Sabbath that is remote from his opponents who have imposed requirements on Sabbath that he negates. The text invites us to reflect on Sabbath in our society. Sabbath is a hot topic among us because of our endless busyness that we suspect is pointless. As a result, Sabbath is drawn into all kinds of spirituality, or it is treated as a retreat from 24-7 connectedness in order to re-engage that endless connectedness with fresh energy, but without any critical awareness. What is lost in our skewed understanding is that Sabbath is an awareness that it is for serious investment in neighbourly well-being. Jesus insists on the social, communal, neighbourly restorative work that is proper to Sabbath. His opponents, who want none of that, are filled with fury. Good Lord of the Sabbath, Give us energy and stamina for a life of restoring withered hands. Deliver us from illusions of rest that are excessively preoccupied with ourselves. In his name. Amen. I'm going to come to our examen, which is an opportunity to pause and reflect on the busyness of our day and to uh, reimagine Jesus present in it. So I will lead us through that and allow just some space each time for you to reflect on your day and the things that are happening and then on the people that you will meet and then offering moments to Jesus where we can reach the last, the lost and the least. So let's be still and bring our day to him. Today is a fresh day. It is a good day because you, Lord, have made it. Therefore, it is full of possibilities and hope. Jesus, you are our source. Help us to live the day with you in the centre. You call us together as your body. Help us to share the day well with others. Yours 
is a revolution of love. Help us to share good news with the last, the lost and the least. Amen. Now here's an opportunity just for us to bring before God any requests and we'll start global and then work down to our own personal concerns and needs. So let's, uh, let's pray. We begin by praying for um, those who are still suffering from the pandemic COVID-19 as the death toll passes one million. We pray for those particularly who have lost loved ones. Bring them comfort and peace. And perhaps in many of those loved ones, they weren't able to say farewell properly because of the nature of the pandemic. We pray for the World Health Organization and other organizations that seek to alleviate the suffering. For those working in cramped conditions like refugee camps, and in places where there's such um, vulnerable health services. We pray for an end to the pandemic. We also pray for those who have lost jobs as a result of uh, the tightening of lockdown and uh, the economy struggling. Pray for those who have suffered in other ways and those who have other health issues that have not been able to be addressed properly because, again, the demand on health services. Bring peace, bring healing, bring community, uh, working and serving together. Draw out from us compassion to support those struggling be with us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also pray for those who feel unjustly treated. And we pray for the structures of our society that have left inequality, whether it's through wealth and prosperity or prejudice and race, racism, we ask for a more equal society, a more accepting society, a welcoming one, a neighbourly one. We pray for the whole issue around Black Lives Matter, that actually uh, communities will work together so that there is mutual respect and there's healing of the breakdown of those relationships. And where there is systemic racism, we pray for wise leaders to manage and lead us into a better place. And we pray for our own attitudes to change, to reach out to one another, for humility, for hospitality. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And then we pray for governments and particularly uh, elections that are taking place soon. And we think particularly here in New Zealand, we pray for those who are running for parliament during this coming election. We pray for, again, for wisdom, for a fair and just system of election, for leaders to um, avoid the kind of um, marring people's names and instead to put forward the policies that people can understand and relate to and know what kind of decisions they need to make. We pray for leaders of all parties who are running for grace, humility, for good leadership and we pray for our new government when it comes into being that it would actually work and collaborate together for the common good. We pray the same for America. We do pray, our Heavenly Father, for righteousness, justice, peace, 
goodness, faithfulness, neighborliness, compassion. We remember again those who are caught on borders, who are running away from violence or oppression. And we pray that we may create work to create a better society that is welcoming. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for our own communities. We pray for uh, our local shops, our places of leisure, our places of enjoyment, places of work. We lift our workplace before you today. May we be peacemakers in there. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And then there's, if there's anybody that you would like to pray for who is in need of healing or comfort uh, or encouragement, then just where you are now, please feel free to speak out their name or say a short prayer for them. I'll just allow some space for you to do that. I want to pray particularly for Judy Hardy, who is still recovering in hospital in Auckland after surgery. I pray for a swift and smooth recovery, that she may be blessed. We continue to pray for Katie and Matt, for Poppy, Josiah and Solomon, as Katie mourns the loss of her dad. And I want to pray for our kids and grandkids back in the UK. Lord, that you'll be with them. Bring them peace. And then let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And a prayer to finish. Look kindly on our world, our God, as we suffer and struggle with one another. Look kindly on your church, driven by the same necessity. And may the light we have seen in Jesus illuminate and brighten all the world. Amen. Thanks so much for joining us for prayer. Please feel free to just stay and uh, be in silence. or pray your own prayers before God. And uh, we will see you again next week. And just a reminder... If you can remember to get yourself a little journal or notebook and a pen and we'll just give you some hints on some stuff that might be helpful as we continue to pray each week. So we'll see you on Sunday and then for prayers again. Uh, there'll be prayers here tomorrow morning and then prayers through the rest of the week. Okay, have a good day. Be blessed. Bye.